Good morning, everyone. We are opening the 185 ordinary period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights with this first hearing entitled The Situation of Freedom of Expression in Guatemala, requested by Red Romper el Miedo Guatemala, integrated by Centro Civita Protección International Mesoamérica, Article 19, Sobrevenza Cultural y Federación de Escuelas Radiofónicas de Guatemala, and the Bufete Jurídico de Derechos Humanos. My name is Julissa Mantilla Falcón. I'm the president of the Inter-American Commission, and I would like to greet today the second vice president, Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena de Troitinio, country reporter, and Commissioner Carlos Bernal. Also with us today are the Executive Secretary Tania Renaud, the Assistant Executive Secretary for Monitoring, Maria Claudia Pulido, the Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca, and the Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, Soledad Garcia. I would like to open this hearing by greeting the state and civil society. And before beginning, I would like to explain the allocation of time. Civil society will begin with their first 20 minutes for their participation, then the state will have another 20 minutes, and then the Inter-American Commission will have another 20 minutes for questions. During the second round of participation, the civil society will have 12 minutes, the state will have 12 minutes, and then the commission will be wrapping up the hearing. On the screen, you will have a digital tool that will indicate uh, time. Please, let's respect time limits, and please be careful with the mic and turn on your mics when you have to participate. Now I would like to give the floor for 20 minutes to the representatives of civil society organizations and please introduce yourself first. Good morning, everyone. I would like to read the Honorable Commission of Human Rights and the Honorable Representatives of the State of Guatemala. My name is Fernando Perez and uh, legal uh, human rights specialist, and with civil society organizations, we thank the commission for this meeting to address the situation of freedom of expression in Guatemala. My intervention will begin by giving you some context of what is happening right now in Guatemala. Today with me are Anabela Cibrian and Ana Evelyn Blanc, Ana Laura Rocas, and uh, in another country, Jose Carlos Zamora. I would like to begin by saying that freedom of thought and of expression in Guatemala has regressed in recent months due to the acts of harassment, intimidation, attacks against journalists and independent media outlets. As a result, a series of attacks and a series of bills are risking the full exercise a freedom of expression. And this is at a conventional and constitutional level. And that is why we requested this hearing. There have been a series of attacks that account for the following. There is a bill that became the law on the prevention and protection of cybercrime decree 3922 of the Congress of the Republic. The bill was aimed at defining crime behaviors and to protect personal data and intimacy of girls, boys, and adolescents in Guatemala who are the most vulnerable on social media. However, this law became a legal tool to attack freedom of expression. They are using this law to give the public prosecutor's office the power to persecute any individual or group that uses any means to disseminate information that is considered confidential. So any person that shares or resents information is liable. And this promoted censorship and also prevented Guatemalans from expressing their opinions or from conducting investigations against public officials. The consequences of law are so serious that go against Article 35 of the National Constitution. 
because companies and independent media outlets in Guatemala were affected by this law. This law was passed in August this year. However, on August the 12th, because of the opposition of some representatives of the Congress decided to revoke it. Another important initiative that it concerns us that is 6070 initiative to strengthen the role of the military in Guatemala. They are trying to allow the national army the power to guarantee citizen security. These functions belong to the national police. And the fact that the army is in charge of citizen security is a danger for the population in Guatemala because it could be a legal means to repress freedom of expression. And lastly, there is a situation in which the army of Guatemala through a specific agreement, the army is in charge of the security for next year's elections. They will be coordinating the actions to guarantee order and security during the electoral process. We are concerned about that because the situation is getting worse in Guatemala. And also we are seeing that the conventional constitutional use of freedom of expression is at risk. Now I would like to give the floor to Anna Blanc. Good morning. Regarding the journalistic exercise, I would like to say that over more than six journalists decided to leave Guatemala because their guarantees were not respected. Also, we are concerned that now journalists are being persecuted for example, the financial director of one of the newspapers, Mrs. Ramos, was affected by this. And also, for example, the observatory or media outlets in Guatemala described that there has been 30 months of repression and censorship against journalists. The report indicates that there were 63 attacks recorded against journalists and 66% of those attacks were committed by state agents. Also, we are seeing that there is also risk of security to journalists. And for example, during some demonstrations in 2020, some police officers attacked journalists, five of them. These facts were reported, but after two years, there are no consequences. There is another case of Mrs. Mr. Figueroa, a journalist who was attacked by police officers. And this was proved in a hearing before the commission. The another, another situation in Guatemala is occurring because several public prosecutor office members are also conducting different um, actions. And sometimes, uh, the victims are not being notified of their detention orders. Sometimes a lawyer goes to the public prosecutor's office to request information about the situation of these alleged victims, but they have no reply and they cannot access the information in the file. The journalists provide information as requested. However, there is a lack of security and usually because there is no security for them, they, these journalists decided to leave the country. Also, in September 2020, when women journalists stayed in a detention center before being heard during the first hearing of her case, we are identifying some systematic patterns because we see that there are different legal precedents committed against journalists. but And sometimes there are social media users that have fake accounts and that share information or fake information on these journalists. And there are several legal proceedings against social communicators. And also we are seeing the reopening of investigations against journalists by the public prosecutor's office. And there is also the lack of due process. And also we see that the public prosecutor's office and the national police act very quickly 
uh, in cases regarding journalists, but they do not act in other cases regarding actions or attacks committed against journalists. I would like to give the floor to my colleague. Thank you for this space. I work on social work. I'm an invest a researcher and also a member of um, several NGOs. And I would like to say that as part of my work as coordinator, I have been co uh, investigating different um, energy companies. And we see that the project of this energy project to send energy to different communities across the country was created without prior consultation to the communities in the region. We have identified 36 people who have been investigated and we are investigating the way in which the companies and the businesses promote different actions including threats, um, influence, peddling and other actions together with sec private security groups in order to conduct their business operations. And we are seeing that the populations in these areas are becoming more and more vulnerable. And we are seeing that public officials are accomplices to the facts. And we are seeing that there are several cases in which we have documented. And I would like to present some concrete cases of violence against myself. On July the 30th this year, I was approached by Carla Sierra Rodriguez. She's a lawyer of one of the energy companies. And she uh, interrupted a broadcasting that we were doing on Facebook, recording the illegal actions of the company in the territory of Santa Lucia. And the judge of municipal matters and the mayor decided to participate in our broadcasting to report all the things that the company was doing. And the workers of the company that were uh, there, we have several workers that were threatening not only myself, but also public officials because of the facts that we were denouncing during the broadcasting. One of these people decided not to identify before the National Civil Police. She, this person did not uncover his or her face. And I received several attacks by this lawyer that was a lawyer of this energy company. And in July, 2021, we did a press conference regarding this situation. And after the conference, there was a car parked without plates. And this car tried to uh, attack me. For several days, I could not leave my home because the car was parked outside my house. I was able to leave my house in a secure way to present a complaint before the police. Unfortunately, this case was dismissed. The public prosecutor office says that there were no cameras outside my house and that it could not be proved. Also, um, we supported the judge of municipal matters because this person wanted to denounce the situation. However, um, several members of our organization were accused by these business members for our actions. But we have not received any information regarding the file of that complaint. And we also were covering a demonstration denouncing the legal acts and actions of one of these energy companies. And the night after the protest, a car was parked outside my house. And the day later, and a day later, the car was behind me and also they stole my car and they left the truck of the energy company outside my house. We have received several threats because of the complaints that we have presented before the public prosecutor office. Our 
devices have been uh, tapped and wired several times. For example, my computer, my phone, all the information that I have had, they have been tapped. And we want to report this because every time that we have this space at an international level, we receive retaliations for these actions. So I would like to thank you for this time. And I, I would like to give the floor to Jose Carlos Zamora. Muy buenos días a todos. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, honorable commissioners. Thank you so much for this hearing and for your interest in Guatemala. My name is Jorge Carlos Zamora and I'm the son of journalist Ruben Zamora that the state of Guatemala has maintained in preventive prison for 85 days. The case of my father is another example of the systematic attacks of Mr. Chamate against um, freedoms and human rights in Guatemala. The case of my father is not the political persecution of a journalist. With over 30 years of experience conducting investigative journalism, when he was detained, Ms. Yamate was uh, in power for over 140 days, and El Periódico had presented several um, cases of corruption of Yamate's government. The goal of closing a media outlet sends a message, a message to all the journalists in Guatemala. They will be persecuted any journalist that attacks them. It's a way to silence the press by using an effective strategy used by authoritarian regimes in the region, including Venezuela and Nicaragua. The whole proceeding has been a constitutional violation of due process of law. It was express case created uh, in only 72 hours. And there is a public prosecutor office who has been denounced for its corruption. The legal proceeding lasted six hours only. The detention was conducted on a Friday, end of business day, in order to do it without any compliance with due process of law. The first hearing that should have taken place within the next 24 hours was held only 10 after his the, uh, 10 hour days after his detention. My father has been detained in isolation for 85 days and he has been harassed and we have been harassed with psychological techniques Insects were introduced in his cell. They are using water to torture him. They're using different ways of punishing him. They enter his cell during dawn and there are security officers and dogs that surveil him. The lawyers of my father have been attacked. We have had four lawyers because, and this is an obstruction to his right to defense. The attacks and harassment acts against my father, his family, and El Periódico, and his lawyers through the parajudicial and paramilitary agents of the state are constant. Those attacks are intense, and they use confidential information that only the public prosecutor office has access to. They want to close El Periódico. They have detained the financial director of, the, of El Periódico. They attack the different journalists of El Periódico. And even though there are, and today there are three accounts or bank accounts of El Periódico that are frozen. And the attacks are constant. My father is a political um victim they are the government is doing everything to close el periódico and to silence the press in our country honorable commission thank you for putting interest in guatemala for your interest in the country and for making a specific emphasis on the case of political prisoner jose ruben zamora 
I would like to give the floor to Ms. Cibrian. Thank you so much. The state of Guatemala has not uh, complied with the exercise of freedom of expression. We are very much concerned with the threats concerning this right as presented at this hearing. Also, the prevalence of aggressions against uh, human rights defenders and journalists by the on the part of state and non-state actors so we request to urge the state of guatemala to uh, observe the inter-american standards on human rights the current framework regulatory framework and to do away with all restrictions of freedom of expressions in place today that are threatening and attacking all journalists and defenders. On the contrary, we expect the state to guarantee the spaces for freedom of expression for uh, indigenous communities and independent communities and journalists. We also want them to comply with the guarantee of freedom of expression for journalists and human rights defenders. And we and to not use authoritarian measures of censorship and control. The, we request the cessation of harassment and persecution of journalists, especially that of uh, Mr. Zamora, and to stop the judicial harassment on this victim's uh, bank accounts and other journalists in the country. Finally, we request the commission to urge the state of Guatemala to not uh, provide any restrictions or uh, threats to the persons that participate in this hearing. Thank you very much. I will give the floor to the state and I want to greet uh, first uh, Ms. Luisa Gatica. So I give the floor to the state of Guatemala. Good morning. Can you hear us? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Madam President. My name is Ramiro Contreras. I'm the uh, director of the Commission for Peace and Human Rights. I will take the floor to uh, intervene on behalf of the state. Greetings to everyone. Members of the Inter-American Commission and members of the civil society, my greetings. I am here on behalf of the state of Guatemala for this thematic hearing uh, made up of different uh, organizations, the foreign ministry, the defense ministry, the uh, office of the general attorney, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Justice Court, of the Republic and the Commission for Peace and Human Rights. In previous opportunities and in different dialogue spaces, we have emphasized that Guatemala is a republic, a democratic republic that is organized to grant rights and freedoms of its citizens and observes different legal processes. So with good faith and transparency that have characterized these relationships of the Guatemala state with the Inter-American Commission, we come here willing to engage in a enriching dialogue. So we call the commission to guarantee the observance of rules and principles of the Inter-American um, spaces. And we request that the information presented will not be uh, twisted. The state uh, presents the following uh, clarifications. The state of Guatemala respects constitutional rights, freedom of expression, thoughts, freedom of association, and we deny this accusation that Guatemala is limiting or restricting any of these rights. Also, we recognize the right of all citizens that may participate, may receive, be big victims of any crime to uh, co present a complaint. Complaints are not 
uh, sentences in any case. The legal system establishes a due process and the pertinent organizations and bodies will conduct an investigation and respond as, as it should. Um, public security is an essential service on the part of the state and it delegates on the national police the protection of people and their goods, the free expression and the freedom of liberty and to combat crime to preserve public security. There have been several, several advancements and progressions. The state nevertheless has faced different obstacles and continues to work to so that journalists are uh, adequately protected so the national police through the uh through its different agencies guarantees protection with respect to human rights in different police activities and human rights and a human rights approach for different defendants to to ensure that the police action is embedded in a legal system also through the division to protect people and security implements security actions in favor of journalists who are protected by this by acts that guarantee that national police agents observe this rules and guarantee that these acts are observed. A protocol is applied when a social communicator requests so as a mechanism of protection against any possible crime against them. The exercise of police is under control as any as in any state. So there is an internal control system, for example, disciplinary courts, uh, internal audits, and the unit for internal affairs of the governance ministry. So all of this ensures the the correct action by the police members so that these processes are applied to agents that may allegedly acted against these ordinances according to the information presented by the general monitoring offices there are no data that have been registered registered linked to the 21 and 28 of november actions there was a course conducted regarding protection of persons for national police agents that protect journalists and all persons that so require. The Criminal Investigation Office, according to the principles of legality and objectivity, addresses all cases professionally, establishing measures of protection for journalists and people who work in media outlets and are at risk. All of this through the, these actions, conducting criminal investigations, documenting and uh, providing consultancy on acts that affected victims of threats and attacks. Even though people are sure that the national police is used as a mechanism of repression and persecution against journalists, they also assert that the observatory has registered 43 attacks, but it's important to say that there are no formal complaints before the public office of the general attorney. As regards the case of Mr. Zamora, he is facing a process for the alleged commitment of money laundering, and these charges are not related to his work as journalist. A precautionary measure was granted uh, with relation to the, his bank accounts and Global SA. Nevertheless, on August the 8th, there was an order to 
to get rid of this uh, bank account freezing. Also, this year, the judge did away with these measures so that he would be able to be present at different hearings. We continue working and we have never stopped working and never our actions have affected the journalist work of Jose Zamora. It's important to underscore that the Commission for Peace and Human Rights maintains a constant monitoring on the conditions of Jose Zamora Marroquin. There have been 18 visits so far, the first 30 on 30, the, July the 30th. And during these visits, we saw that Jose Ma Samora Marroquin is doing okay, as he has said himself, and no inhuman or degrading actions have been committed against him. As regards Juan Luis Font, we must say that there are three complaints that have been presented. Nevertheless, two of them have been dismissed, and the third is part of a process of investigation that is currently under uh, secrecy. All complaints have been presented by third parties and not by the Office of the General Attorney. It's not the state persecuting them for their journalist work. In the cases of Lucero Zapalu and Ojo Company Pisto, there are no complaints presented with them as defenders. There's also, it's important to understand or that the legal system has always been observed in all these cases. During the time Mrs. Mejia was detained, her human rights always were protected and her life and personal integrity were always safeguarded. This was uh, confirmed by the commission by doing away with the precautionary measures that were granted to Mrs. Mejia. And with this action, any violence, gender violence uh, was also dismissed. As regards Julio Antonio Ramirez, the file is under investigation and has been given to the pertinent uh, bodies. Since the Questing party said that in 2020, there had been attacks at the general attorney's office. There are no complaints as regards that these uh, victims have, are journalists. As regards the convention signed with the National Defense Ministry, there is biased information which could be mistaken. We want to clarify that the spirit of this convention is to uh, facilitate the electoral process. And this is aimed at guaranteeing what is established in the political constitution and the national civil rights uh, compact. Also, the members of Guatemala's army cannot vote. This means that, once again, the state of Guatemala says that the information shared is only as regards military officers. Finally, the state of Guatemala wants the commission to, to strict to strictly address this topic with this information and only as regards the freedom of expression, which is not affected by this convention. As regards the state, the use and abuse of social media only corresponds to accounts that are not by members of the state. So all subjects affected by these materials may report this to the state bodies in accordance to the law. A state control over social media could be uh, reported because controlling digital media 
through surveillance mechanism according to the rele in 2013 in its report on freedom of expression on, in, on the internet produces an indirect limitation that attacks freedom of expression so any action of surveillance of third parties on social media will result in and of itself on a violation of the freedom of expression right. The Inter-American Court on Human Rights itself in Carabajal and others versus Colombia uh, stated that the freedom of expression is not an absolute right. It can be subjected to conditions and even limitations, especially when it interferes with other rights guaranteed by the convention. There's also the possibility of demanding responsibility and accountability of other third parties as regards the reputation of the victims. So, in this sense, the court has established that there may be accountability if there is an attack of honor and reputation. But we underscore that this, in order for this to happen, it's important to have a report or a complaint and people can do so when they consider that posts may be, uh, may constitute slander. Nevertheless, these crimes are only uh, subject of the investigation if this is re related to private action. So the state cannot do anything about this if this is not duly reported. We are willing to receive any reports if this is so happened. There have been many illegal acts by officials according to the requesting party and this may be uh, unsupported claims we may determine if people can be benefited by protection measures according to this right now eight journalists are beneficiaries of this and 32 are beneficiaries of parametral uh, security. These are measures to ensure the security and safeguard uh, these people. The Office of the General Attorney uh, and the judge must assess if each petition is legally uh, supported. Precautionary measures are only temporary measures in order to uh, find out the truth in these investigations. In between 2020 and 2022, there have not been any apprehensions ordered against human rights defenders or journalists. These uh, measures are related to uh, different crimes. There was a degree created which was uh, created in August 2019 and was referred to the Congress so that it would be studied in 2019. In May 2022, there were two debates on this bill. In August 22, there was a third debate. In August the 4th, 2022, it was approved. And on the basis of this, the Congress plenary approved this legislative agreement on August 2022, through which the procedure of the previous degree on prevention on cyber uh, delinquency was uh, was removed and it was ordained to to close the previous act 
as regards the act to strengthen the army of Guatemala, it will, this bill was received on July 2022. It was referred to the Congress on August 2022, and there was a favorable uh, decision by the commission. Also in August, there were two debates over this bill. In August 23rd, 2022, there was a political agreement of, uh, of closing this bill. So finally, we request the commission to analyze this in an unbiased way and to analyze all the information that has been presented. Also, there's a call to a constructive dialogue because this may result in different measures to continue protecting the rights of all persons. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the representatives of the state. Now the Inter-American Commission will have its time to participate, but I would like to say something. The goal of this hearing is that freedom of expression in Guatemala. We have heard some aspects related to precautionary measures. Regarding precautionary measures, the commission has a different proceeding and the commission conducts the monitoring of those measures as it should be. So now I would like to give the floor to the country reporter Esmeralda Rosemena for her comments. Thank you so much, Madam President. I would like to greet respectfully all the participants of this hearing. I would like to thank civil society organizations who requested this hearing. And I would like to greet the honorable representatives of the state of Guatemala, our dear ambassador, Luisa Gatica. Thank you so much for being here today at this hearing. Let me see. After hearing both parties, I identify a situation as mentioned by the representative of the state. What I see is that we have two opposing positions, but as it is known, the goal the essence of the public hearings of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights is to listen to both parties. And we thank especially the representatives of the state for being here so we can hear their perspective and What we would like to do is to identify the elements that should be identified for this hearing. And I would like to quote the first words of the state and the last words of the state. They are talking about a constructive dialogue. They talk about the need to file complaints and reports. They talk about the norms and the proceedings to address the different situations because there might be a need to reform a law or not. So the question that I have for both parties is the following. This process of a constructive dialogue how can we do it on the basis of what? Because we have very opposing perspectives. So I would like to know how you could begin a constructive dialogue. And in my role of commissioner, what I can do is to look at the process Quoting the words used by civil society, there was a process of criminalization of social communicators. Um, the civil society talked about issues 
regarding the right to inform and to be informed, as is the case of community radio stations. So, um, how can you think that this constructive dialogue can occur taking into consideration the current situation? Do you think that taking into consideration the current aspects, do you believe that civil society and the state could have a constructive dialogue? We see that civil society organizations are presenting today a reality, a situation in which there are many problems and confrontations and barriers to exercise the right to freedom of expression and the right of the population to be informed according to their perspective. So trying to find a bridge or a way of establishing a dialogue. For example, there are some confidential investigations and not even the affected person is not aware of what is happening. I think that we need to promote communication in those cases so that we can think that that person is being able to exercise his right to defense. So, Madam President, I would like to request both parties to really consider the possibility of promoting a constructive dialogue. And we are at a position of acting as a mediator in that constructive dialogue. Thank you so much, President. Thank you, Rapporteur. I would like to ask Commissioner May Macaulay, second Vice President, if she has any comments to make. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, and good morning, everyone, the representatives of the state and civil society. I humbly and, and um, hoped that we could meet even online in different, under different circumstances, but it is as it is. And good morning, Madam Ambassador. I, I am concerned and, and to paraphrase a bit of what my sister Commissioner Esmeralda has stated, I am concerned about the fact that the stage talks about constructive dialogue, but its answer was as if it were in a trial. This is not a trial, it's a hearing. And the intent of the commission in these hearings is to have constructive dialogue between the parties so that the parties themselves can in fact arrive at a resolution of whatever the issue is, um, in, uh, which is of importance to the hearing and conditions in the country. But I have on my notes a complete denial by the state. And if that is so, one is acting as if this is a trial and not a, a, a hearing of the commission. And it's very unfortunate. I am also concerned that one hears of a, a gentleman who is being in detention for over 80 days, almost 90 days, and pre-trial detention, I understand the circumstances to be. And this is clearly an unreasonable period of time for somebody to be in detention and not try it. The, the, the inter-American system, I have been in it long enough, both as a judge and a commissioner, to know that this, this is a, an issue which is clear. Esta claro pre-trial detention must be reasonable. Otherwise, it's contrary to the standards of human rights of our region and the con uh, convention. So I, I am, I'm, I'm very, very concerned about it. And also 
the the uh, 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 assertion that per, um, army the army is called to intervene against civilians who are exercising their basic fundamental human rights, which is an entitlement of theirs. And, and, and that is another issue which has been, it's been clear for years, stated by the court and the commission, that this is unacceptable. The army is there to fight against enemies of the state if it's at war with another state or if there, there is internal civil war among different factions within the country. And that is clearly not the case now in Guatemala. We're talking about the freedom of expression and the journalists should be free and independent to pursue their profession. The citizens are, should be free to voice their opinion even in complete opposition to everything a government is doing in any state which is a democracy. So I'm, I, I agree with my sister Esmeralda. I think a way has to be found for the state and civil society to sit together. And maybe the commission is involved in that as amicus curiae. And I use, I use that uh, advisably that you're not for either side, you're just there to make sure that you're able or, um, or a mediating situation so that both sides can talk openly and respect the other's point of view rather than having to meet a bare denial. I do wish uh, the wonderful country of Guatemala will speak with the uh, civil society persons and those who feel hurt and have suffered uh, um, in, in a more constructive way, shall I say. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Le pregunto al Comisionado Bernal si tiene comentarios. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to ask Commissioner Bernal if she ha he has any comments or questions. Good morning. Can you hear me? Because this is my first intervention. Thank you so much. I'd like to begin with thanking the petitioners and the state for participating at this hearing. And I would like to um, repeat something that the president said is not, this is not a hearing on a case or on a precautionary measure, it's a general hearing. I think that freedom of expression is a basic component of a democratic constitutional state. And a test or uh, something that I use to test the health of a country is whether there are massive media outlets that are opposed to the state and that are able to publish their opinion. I live some time in Europe and when the socialist government was in Spain, you could see that there were media outlets that opposed the state and were able to publish. And in Germany, the same situation was there. And in Italy, you have two newspapers with different opinions that were able to publish as well, etc. So they have one question for petitioners. In Guatemala, there are at least three media outlets that exercise systematic opposition against the government, El Periódico, La Hora, and 1502. These three media outlets, when you see the first page, you will find several news on state institutions in a very critical way. You denounce things, etc. So my question is how you can generally accuse the state for a lack of freedom of expression taking into consideration that there are at least three big media outlets that exercise freedom of expression systematically. And sometimes they even complained against the state. So you are saying that uh, the state is violating freedom of expression. And I would like to know if these media outlets are included 
among the reports that are you're mentioning. And I would like for the state to express in the same vein. Thank you so much, Commissioner. I have heard Ms. Laura Rojas and I listened to the different presentations of civil society and the rapporteurship on freedom of expression will be presented. And we have a report on women journalists as well. I would like to ask a question to civil society organizations, which specific cases of gender violence against women journalists exist? And I would like to ask the state, which preventive measures are you taking? And which corrective measures are you taking to prevent these facts? I would like to give the floor to the special rapporteur for freedom of expression, Pedro Baca, and we would like to give him two or three additional minutes uh, taken into consideration the specialty of this hearing. Rapporteur, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Madam President. Thank you, commissioners. I'd like to thank the civil society and the representatives of the state for being here today. This hearing shows uh, the gap that exists between civil society and the authorities. It's impossible that there is uh, a total lack of guarantees in terms of freedom of expression or the other way around. The special rapporteurship, according to its monitoring, believes that Guatemala is facing a crucial time regarding the promotion, protection, and prevention of the right to freedom of expression. As part of this hearing, Last Friday, in, during the, the most important uh, journalist uh, prizes, the Guatemala's journalism was recognized. So this shows that this is a great moment of uh, quality for Guatemala's journalism, which would be a source of pride. But I must say that we have spoken to many journalists uh, from the rapport, special rapporteurship and not allege there are good conditions for the work. On the contrary, there is a free uh, fear of retaliation. There's a series of uh, judicial processes. So there is, according to them, no guarantees for their work. We demand the most uh, degree of dialogue between parties, and this implies that public officials must be rigorous enough, not only as regards monitoring offices, but actually because the public officials' work must be a source of monitoring and uh, of, by the society. So actions must go beyond words and there must be criteria complied with to ensure this protection. As regards criminal proceedings and jails, well, this cannot be the place where uh, representatives of democracy solve their controversies, especially when there is a potential of uh, sentencing to, tr to prison someone because this affects public interests. So the state is called to ensure that any restriction or, or attack on the freedom of journalists, because freedom of expression is an absolute right, whether it involves the public powers or third parties, there must be a proportionality. Proportionality is one of the elements I would uh, ask questions on on the part of the state. If there is any possibility of actions in terms of time periods and, and time uh, as general on deadlines, um, the, there's the commission is available to contribute to have better guarantees of freedom of expression. I don't know if I have much time left, but I would wrap up my intervention by saying that the Inter-American Court, well, this is a question for the state. The court has stated that access to justice requires the determination of 
facts, the investigation of accountability in a reasonable uh, period of time, because a delay may constitute in and of itself a violation of judicial guarantees. So in this sense, the rapporteurship would like to know what are the efforts being made by the state to first comply with due process in all cases, particularly as regards reasonable time, and to, regardless of the facts that are being investigated, the state has it uh, taken into account the journalist work and the role of press in a democracy. I would like to also call the state to take into consideration another thing that we have presented in our latest uh, press release on freedom of expression in Guatemala, freedom of the press, which has to do with the case of Jose Ram Ruben Zamora. We have presented the rapporteurship's interest in visiting him because we believe that given the media he is leading and as commissioner bernal was saying uh, a person that is leading a media outlet that is in prison in an inter-american system where there is a special rapporteurship and freedom of expression must have the opportunity to be visited this would be a difference in comparison with other countries or in other cases that have been presented in this uh, hearing so this offer is could, must be taken into account on the state representatives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rapporteur. We begin with the second intervention on the civil society representatives for 12 minutes. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Honorable Commission. We would like to state first what's the situation as regards abuses in social media. And certainly we want to underscore that there are one thing is threats and others are crimes against honor these facts have suffered in third party environments so according to the jurisprudence of the inter-american system and united nations standards there this is has to do with abuses by third parties and they, the state cannot say that this that nothing can be done about this there is no national system to prevent and protect uh, from attacks, threats, and other types of violence, structural violence that affect those who uh, exercise their freedom of expression. That system should be in place, should be designed to be implemented alongside with civil society and communicators, journalists, and human rights defenders. As regards this spirit of the convention with the Ministry of Defense as uh, exhibited today, we remind you that the freedom of, free of expression also includes access to information and, and the right to disseminate that information. We do not intend to twist information. We request the state to really maintain that convention and not restrict information to that uh, agreement. There was a willingness on dialogue on the part of authorities, and there have also been statements as regards uh, the case of Jose Rabon Zamora. So we suppose that the Guatemalan state should not have any inconvenience so that the commission uh, carries out an in, in local visit to also visit Mr. Zamora and other persons that are deprived of their liberty in the same process of criminalization that we have spoken about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, to answer some questions, well, the state usually see us as enemies and we are human rights defenders that are uh, denouncing cases, which is a, a work that is done in any democratic state. We're always open to dialogue and deconstruction uh, in a democratic way. Also, as regards the media that have been mentioned as critical media outlets, I must say that 
the situation in El Periódico is critical. While there have been some embargoes lifted, other embargoes continued on the accounts that have the most amount of uh, resources for the functioning of the newspapers. So some payments cannot be carried out. As regards La Hora, there is a double criminalization against the director and his path and his father. The journalists are uh, being attacked. As regards women journalists, well, the problem is quite invisible because there is no the uh, capacity for filing complaints. There are no complaints on these cases. I want to remind the states that they are under the obligation to have a systematic uh, control because this is part of this is part of the inter-American system. In the case of uh, measures of security since 2015, the uh, consultancy officer hired by the state said we was going to conduct a monitoring process and this has not happened so far. The police, uh, the police was in charge of receiving the complaints of women that have been attacked by the same police officers that worked at that at that office. So this was one of the cases related to that. And also, there are cases in which measures are granted without the uh, people reporting them uh, knowing about this about what is happening with our cases. So I think that is all I wanted to say. Well, to wrap up, I would say something about the standards that the Inter-American Court has stated as regards the exercise of freedom of expression. I wanted to say that the court, of course, has stated that freedom of expression is at a milestone that supports all democratic societies. So the problem that we are facing in Guatemala is that there are no bridges, Madam Commissioner. Unfortunately, the, the bridges have been burned. And being here right now to be here with my face, my name is, is putting myself at risk. And I'm saying this with the whole respect. I am a lawyer in Guatemala, but also I am a user of the inter-American system. And my one of my colleagues, a young lawyer, was already threatened by the mere exercise of her freedom. In a case that was mentioned uh, by the special rapporteur, like the fact of this prize, that he mentioned, well, this was not, the, the, the prize received by that award has its own consequences here in our country because those who dare to have, to, to pronounce criticism, we should have that space for dialogue, those bridges, but unfortunately those bridges have been burdened. They are not existent. So what types of measures for protection for journalists do we have? You're speaking about support and training in protecting journalists on the part of the state, but one thing is training and the and a different thing is implementation. There is no implementation here. And this is what we are bringing to you today. This is critical. We want to call the state to reflect, to comply with that principle that they always mention in these types of hearings. We, they say, well, we created the convention, but we must understand that the, they must understand that this is not a trial. We're not here to fight. We're here to contribute. And this is what a constructive dialogue is about. It's not 
comfortable. It must be a bit uncomfortable, but it's constructive. It's not confronting or, or fighting. I think that is extremely important. With all my respect to all of you um, commissioners and Mr. Rapporteur, but especially for the representatives of the state, we are not obstacles. They should not see us as obstacles. We are here trying to build, to strengthen what we have left of our democracy. So there is an observatory on the numerous amount of legal cases, as Mr. Rapporteur was saying, the criminal rights should not be used here. The, the, the criminal proceedings should be the last resort, but this is happening all the way around here. It's all appended. They want to solve this with the use of force, with the punitive force of the state, and this should not be possible. Dialogues are not built that way. Having a, a criminal proceeding is equal to having a gun to one's head here. So we do not have these bridges availa available. The most, most Guatemalans have lost that which is basic uh, us believe in our justice system. We do not have that anymore. Believing in authorities or in legislators, this is lost. And this is not of today. This is not a current issue. It's a long standing issue. This is why what we want here at this hearing is to have that freedom of expression, that we are allowed to ex exercise that freedom, which is critical, but it's not confrontational. Sometimes when we are critical, we are uh, defined as enemies. And this is something that is happening in Guatemala. It seems as if we are going back to those dark times where someone just for saying two reasonable words, they become enemies. That should not be possible. Lastly, it's extremely important to say that we're, we were speaking about manifestations or, or demonstrations in 2020. There is uh, a defendant that we are defending that is 18 years old. It's a girl that is accused because allegedly she uh, painted the Congress walls and supposedly she deteriorated the national heritage this way. But this sort of acts is the exercise of manifesting one's freedom of expression, manifesting one's opposition to some things to enact at the time. It, the Congress was debating a budget that was not adequate to face the shortcomings of this country at the time. So today, this girl is arbitrarily taken to trial. So that is our request today. We, we duly request our safe, uh, our security to be guaranteed. I only wanted to add something. I forgot to mention some women journalists that have been part of these cases under this administration. Irma Siliar, a journalist of Ojote, we don't have her authorization to say her name, Mendoza, Anastasia Mejia, Dulce Maria, Inacia Cinto. Two of our colleagues uh, are exiled right now. Thank you so much, civil society. I give the floor to the state for 12 minutes. Thank you so much. Madam President, we will make use of this time. We'll try to give the floor to other officials that are representing the state of Guatemala. Stead, first, we begin with my intervention in the face of some observations and comments that were made by the commissioners that we found very interesting. Well, there's an agreement on part of commissioners as regards the purpose and the goal of this 
hearing, thematic hearing, and the the state of Guatemala truly agrees with that. This is a space for constructive dialogue to achieve those commonalities, those spaces where there are agreements with civil society, and also to hear comments, and especially as the Constitution uh, reads that the state must advance common good. So in that sense, we really thank uh, thank you for, for having made clear that this is not about the precautionary measures, as you very well said. And also, I would like to say that Guatemala's intervention was based on the information we had access to by uh, presented by the civil society. So that made us uh, make some uh, declarations. And of course, we know this should not be a space to, to address some of those comments. The Guatemala states was only clarifying some of the points that were uh, presented by the petitioners. So I believe that constructive dialogue, despite some difficulties, did uh, have some positive results. For example, being able to address some concerns on the part of petitioners as regards some bills that after the democratic legislative discussions, we see that they have been closed or archived or have been delayed. So the exchange of information, of information on that part is positive. Also, the uh, as regards the Ministry of Defense, we have official information. We presented the, the contents of that agreement and that was a response of those concerns that any civil society representatives may have. So in that sense, the state of Guatemala focusing on the topic of this hearing, which is the freedom of expression or freedom of thought, we would like to say that the, as Commissioner Bernal said, and in the face of his question, which was very clear, we want to answer that Article 35 of the Constitution regulating the freedom of expression establishes that freedom of, of expression is guaranteed without any censorship. And this uh, right may not be restrict, restricted by any law. And miss and do not respect in honor in view of that law will be uh, penalized will be criminalized so that is the part of the constitution of the article number 35 of the constitution that addresses that part sometimes reading uh, the law uh, does not reflect a reality as some say however the media outlets that Commissioner Bernal was mentioning are functioning. For example, El Periódico is a media outlet, as it was said here during this hearing, that is critical, that uh, conducts research on the current administration and is one of the newspapers that are exercising their journalist work alongside La Hora and other newspapers in view of this article 35. Also, the responsibility that could be that could be uh, appointed as regards the abuse of said right, there was a meeting regarding this right, which is, of course, a milestone for the democratic functioning. But the court, uh, the Inter-American Court establishes this limitation and the opportunity, uh, actually the right that people may enjoy to demand from the state, the investigation and investigation be open of something that may constitute an offense of private life. And as civil society representatives said, there is a distinction between crimes against honor or a threat. However, the state of Guatemala would like to underscore as part of this constructive dialogue that the crime of threats, of course, must be addressed by the state, but it's also 
a crime of particular uh, nature. So the state of Guatemala does not have full uh, capacity of of conducting a research. We must guarantee the right of any citizens to report any of these crimes and also the state only can open an investigation against someone with a previous report or complaint. These are guarantees that are part of modern democratic states. Also, the state of Guatemala, as part of that of this last intervention, would like to highlight that we have called on not accusing this the state of Guatemala of criminalization. We believe that the discussion as regards the contents of legal proceedings must be done through legal means, that is, um, regulated means, be, whether they are ordinary or extraordinary. In the case of Guatemala, this happens through amparos. Um, uh, we believe that the discussion of the content of pre criminal proceedings must be uh, conducted in this sort of scenarios as part of a guarantee for defenders so that they know that their deci the decisions will be discussed by uh, legal or legal bodies. Also, we want to add some information to civil society's uh, information. We see the 2021 report conducted by the High Commissioner on human rights where in item 82 they recognize uh, they recognize the state of guatemala for having observed more than 113 man demonstrations uh, for having monitored these demonstrations in a very specific way so there have been challenges that have been addressed by the by the state of guatemala and we believe we are on our right path this sort of third party information allows us to to highlight that also in addition to what we have said about uh, social media i would like to give the floor to the representative of the judici judiciary in the face of the question as regards the concern on some commissioners of some commissioners on due process at hearings and time periods which have been commented on this hearing which of course are applicable to any judiciary of any state that respect their constitution so I want to give the floor for some minutes to Mr. Davila, who is representing the uh, Supreme Court of Justice. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As regards the judiciary, I want to be very brief on some aspects that are not that clear today. First of all, I want to mention that the justice in Guatemala is imparted in accordance with the constitution and the judiciary has the power and the right to uh, judge and sentence on judged fact. However, the exercise of judges independence determines that judges must address complaints by the office of the general attorney. So this controller judges determine in different cases if there is a lack of merits because there are no the necessary evidence to prosecute someone or to really prosecute when those circumstances are complied with and to establish the timelines if there is any uh, risk of flight or escape. If it's necessary, we uh, lift the cases of those persons that were at some point defenders, defendants. So it's important to say that the Supreme Court of Justice, and of course the Guatemalan state, 
enjoy independence the judges are independent to conduct their work also there has been an effort made on the part of the supreme court of justice to improve the timelines as regards the the execution of processes we have created uh, organs in which there are more than one judge that may address these processes to reduce these timelines, these this deadlines. However, these are subjected to the periods of investigation. However, each deadline is complied with. During the exercise of the right to defense, the parties are have also the opportunity to exercise their right to defense through the means that are established by the criminal proceedings code. This has resulted in the extension of the times of some of the proceedings, but this only with the aim to have the right of defense be exercised. We want to clarify that on the part of the Supreme Court of Justice and the state of Guatemala, there is a willingness to improve on those times, time periods. However, they are subjected, as I said, to an investigation and to have uh, the, the resources filed by the parties uh, be addressed. So there is a willingness to give citizens the opportunity to have uh, true justice. Thank you. Thank you very much to state representatives. We are concluding with today's hearing. I wanted to comment a few things. First, the Inter-American Commission uh, welcomes uh, this a uh, hearing on freedom of expression as the start of our PDF sessions, because it's freedom of expression is the uh, corner store, uh, cornerstone of democracy and democracy suffers when these freedom of expression uh, activities are not addressed or respected. Also, I congratulate the civil society representatives for not only being here, but for the continuous work because they are on uh, raising the voices of many persons they represent. Also, I congratulate the state of Guatemala for being he here and their willingness to engage in a dialogue. We uh, acknowledge that. Also, as regards the difficulties of dialogue, as civil society said, well, it's true, it's hard, but it's better to have dialogue rather than not having dialogue because when dialogue is not there the use of force starts and we know what happens when that is the the case in that case all members of the inter-american commission uh, pres present here are available to continue supporting and exercising our functions and also to be able to visit guatemala guatemala if we are so permitted to promote democracy and these standards for which the commission was created so long ago. So we reiterate our willingness to uh, accompany such a difficult dialogue that sometimes may result in such a confrontation, but the commission is at your is available at all moments to accompany this dialogue. So thank you so much, especially the persons that are uh, look that are hearing this, especially people in Guatemala. The Inter-American Commission is with you, is hearing you, and is here to work on the defense of freedom of expression. We have mentioned the Inter-American Court standards. So uh, there's a recent case, the Yinel de Doja journalist against Colombia, where the court, regardless of the importance of freedom of expression, the court really pointed to the due diligence of states for women journalists. And as I say, the commission is always here available. So thank you so much to each of you and to my all to all my colleagues. And I uh, adjourn this hearing. Have a great day. Goodbye.